everybody, it's Ann Forrester from Reaper Miniatures and I am here today for the Reaper Toolbox to show you uh, a style of painted metallics uh, that we were taught actually by, I'm going to give cred, Kirill Kanev, who's an amazing painter and also uses Master Series paint, um, came and gave us a workshop and I'm now going to expose all of his secrets for you. Well, okay, I'm just going to show you kind of what we do. So here we go. Um, we're working on a grudge bust, which is now in stock again. Um, finally, after so long. Uh, and it's a great technique for larger areas of metallics. So you can really work and get a lot done. So what I've done is I've base coated the metallic area with a uh, uh, dark blue black. It really doesn't matter what you use. You could use a dark brown, you could use a dark gray, but a dark color is important because metallic flake is translucent and it's made to go over a dark backdrop for maximum shine. So what I'm working with is uh, true silver right now and that's uh, 9207 and we're just going to base coat the area we just want to get on a nice solid coat um, it helps to start with a lighter metallic when you're doing this technique because you're going to be throwing a lot of washes and and weathering uh, darker colors at it so the lighter you start the more room you have to kind of you know throw a whole bunch of different colors or effects um, you're just going to base coat, really. and, and uh, when you're working on a bigger model like this, really use the largest brush you can do for base coating uh, that you can get away with, because you want to get the base coating part over as fast as you can. Um, you still want to wipe a lot of your paint off of that big brush before you apply it, or it's going to take a while to dry because it's going to pool. But as you can see, I am using a gigantic brush. Um, do, 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 do. Here we go. All right. Didn't take very long. And you could leave it at one coat. If your paint dries really fast, you can do a second coat. Um, if you want it really bright, a second coat can be a really good idea. So I'm actually going to do that in just a second when I get this dried. All right, so we're dry, so I'm gonna throw a real quick second coat on. You can see it's gonna be a lot more solid. Some metallics cover better than others. Uh, it really depends on the flake. Um, the qualities will change. So, I mean, by all means, experiment with different, like the bones of silvers are gonna act a little bit different than these core silvers when you put them down, uh, and they'll shine more. Um, I'm choosing to work with these because I, I want kind of a duller metal because uh, he looks really beat up. So, thought I would just start with that kind of in mind. There we go. We're gonna let that dry, and I've already mixed my first shadow, so I'm gonna explain that to you guys while we let this dry, which should only take a second. So my first shadow is uh, it's gonna be a mixture of things. It's gonna be a couple of dark colors, and you could use a really dark brown, like walnut brown. I've used a mixture of blue liner and brown liner to kind of give me uh, a bluish black color. To those, you're gonna add some gloss sealer. That's gonna be uh, item number 9298, I think. Let me look. Yes, 9298. Um, and uh, what that is, is yes, this is a shadow color, and you're like, but shadows are dark and they don't shine. But actually, when metallics do weather, unless it's dust or mud or something else opaque, there is some shine for tarnished metallics. Like if you look at blued metal, for example, on, on a firearm, uh, it still has a shine to it. So that's why we're using some gloss in our mix here. We add to that a bit of water, and uh, we also add just a little bit of our metallic in there just to keep that suggestion that this tarnishing is going over the top of a metallic. I think my center plate here is pretty dry, so we're just gonna start. You guys are gonna love this technique because it's super messy. Um, use a brush that you don't really care about, which means I'm gonna change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not use that brush, Ann. All right, let's use this really, really craptastic Taclon. Cheap Arch Store Michaels a Buck Taclon, which is, this is your permission to use a brush like this in actual high quality painting. Um, fill it up, just honestly slobber it on and dab it all over the place. Leave some spots clear if you think that those spots would uh, have rubbed off, for example. Like up here on the upper chest, there probably would be some rub off when he puts his arm across, you know, to scratch his nose or his shoulder, you know. Um, down here on the edge, this is going to be rubbed off too. Don't think too hard about it though, because you can always come back in and add more highlights or more shadows to tune this. And we absolutely will be doing that. But honestly, first coat, I'm going to do the first coat on the second plate. I'm just going to go a little nuts. 
Let's see, let's see. I want to kind of make sure that I do get my tarnish in wherever there are um, hollows or pits um, or edges like divots where I feel like there would be more pooling action, right? So after this first coat, I'm gonna tune it a lot more that way. So we'll rinse out our big brush. We're gonna go to a smaller one. I'll use the Reaper Zero as a good, good size for this model. Also, if you see any bubbles, feel free to go in and pop them. You can also just blow, blow on a wash and it'll pop the bubbles. Um, so we're already, it's still wet, but that's not too bad. It's also going to be a little hard to figure out when it's not wet because we used gloss sealer. Um, but what we're looking to do now is to build up deeper shadows where we think the dirt and dust and grime would really accumulate. So maybe along this crease here, we want to add in more puddly dark color and up here right under this um, and down here. There we go. And it is really wet still, so I'm going to give it just a few seconds to dry so I can really build up these colors on here and you guys can see the depth, okay? So hold on for just a second. All right, so it's had a moment to dry so we can start to build up another layer of color. You do want to make sure that it is dry as much as possible because if you go in while it's still tacky, you can rip paint up. Which actually, for this technique, probably wouldn't be a catastrophe, but would be in any other case. So I'm actually going to get a little bit, a little bit darker, I think, on this. Let me add a little bit of blue liner over here so I can grab it when I need it. And you can do that. I mean, just because you mixed up that starting color doesn't mean you can't dab in other colors. And in fact, that's what we're about to do. So there's a color we have called Russet Brown, which I really adore because it's essentially um, a burnt umber equivalent. And that can be used to suggest like dirt and soil. So I mixed it a little bit into my uh, mixture of gloss sealer and stuff. And I'm gonna dab it all along where I think dirt might really build up, like around those rivets. And it doesn't, you don't have to be real, real precise in how much you mix in. I mean, you can always go back and adjust it. Yeah. A little bit there, there. All those big pits would have dirt around them. He'd have dirt around his beard because he's really kind of an ill-kempt kind of dwarf. Definitely looks like he's not part of the uh, Dwarven Hygiene Committee, if you get my drift. All right, so see how that adds extra dimension? Because you're adding a different color, right? And you're suggesting like maybe a little bit of rust even. If you went in here with a bit of orange, you could definitely suggest some rust along this seam if you wanted to really make him out to be a dissolute sort of guy. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit more of that up on this other plate here. I'm just taking my gloss and metal and liner mixture and putting a little bit of russet brown in it. Using a, a Reaper Zero brush, which is a moderately large brush. And I'm not, you know, not really paying attention to my brush stroke, I'm just dabbing. I'm pretty much stippling it on, using the tip of the brush to create an irregular pattern, but trying to place it with purpose so that you can see where the, where the dirt would go. There, around the rivets, wherever you think something might. And you don't want to be too regular with it. You can get a little crazy and say, oh, I think I'm just going to dirty up this part. I'm just going to dirty up that part, like so. And if you want, you can bring in a little bit more of your dark. And really, this is about build it up as much as you think is awesome. Like, as, as much as you have to add to make him look as, as dirtied up and as beat up as you want, just keep going at it. Um, another cool way to mess with this is to add a little bit of red here and there, like blood splashes. Um, so I've got spattered crimson here. from uh, That was actually one of our Kickstarter colors, so it's a later number. It's a 9277, but it's a really good reg triad. You guys should check it out if you haven't. Um, and you can just kind of dab it, like here and there. Just kind of, you know, just a couple little specks. You don't have to make it look like super realistic. You can just put it here and there. Uh, a little bit there. Maybe a little bit right there. And vary the size of your, your blood speckles. And if you think they're maybe a little bit too red, you can rinse your brush, and while they're still wet, you can kind of dab at them, make them a little bit not quite as red. Or you can also just come back and touch them with some brown, you know. Don't sweat it too much. You just, with this, the great thing about this model is the, the metal is so very beat up. I'm going to raise this up so you can get a little closer. All right, so now you can see 
it's a really beat up model, so it doesn't really matter. It's actually really good for you guys as a, if you're beginning with this technique, this is a great model to start with um, because it does so much of the work for you, right? It shows you where all those pits and stuff are. In fact, uh, you can see there's a couple of, of, of scratches that I could uh, touch up. I'm gonna actually switch to a, a smaller, finer brush now and take some of that blue liner that I pulled out and make a really dark indentation um, along some of these scratches and pits. So we're gonna bring this in and I'm gonna, that looks like a pit to me. So I'm gonna bring that in. Um, and this one's gonna darken up. And pretty much wherever I've got a real hole in the armor, I'm gonna darken that way up. Just because it would be. So that, in these holes, I don't want there to be a metallic shine coming out of them. And I might put an extra shadow like underneath these rivets too, just uh, for lighting's sake. You know, it's really, it's how far you wanna go, right? Like how much do you wanna do to it? It looks pretty darn good as it is. Um, so, all right, so we'll just leave that there for shading. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the seam here real quick. We're just gonna put a real dark line of liner right down the seam. To make sure that there's a nice separation there. And I could also do the same if I wanted to right up here on the top to kind of give it a dark shadow. Make it pop a little bit more. All right, so wherever I've added, I've added that little indent, but it looks a little unnatural. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my mix again and uh, kind of suggest that it's dented in by putting a shadow there at the top. And again, you can always mess with it a little bit. It's really as much work and as persnickety as you want to be. That brown got a little bit rich there. And while it's wet, it's all fair game, folks. You can take your brush and wick it right off. There we go. All right, I like it better. All right, so if you're doing a scratch, you want a very pale color to go and kind of highlight that scratch or to, or to just do little micro abrasions. So I think we're going to use some shining mithril here, which is a bones metallic, which means it's shinier, which will be good for us when we're trying to pick up highlights. And I'm also going to get some pearl white, 9100. That's a white metallic. It's really good for highlighting other metallics. It also has a little bit more solid coverage for some things like real fine detail. So it's a, it's a very useful thing for those. So I'm gonna grab my mithril. And the first thing we wanna do is maybe kind of look at our dwarf and say, okay, well, where are our spots where stuff's gonna rub off? Probably on the top of these things here. And kind of add a little bit of uh, metallic back on there. And we can also um, say, okay, well, there's gonna be a lot of rub off around here. So I'm gonna just kind of dab some brighter metallic along there. I'm gonna grab some uh, brighter metallic and pick up the edges here because there'd be a lot of scraped off stuff because he's obviously going to be abrading any uh, any dirt or dust or corrosion is going to be abraded on the edge. So you can even take that up into the metal a little bit here and there. Make it show up a little bit better. Get the rest of these. Make the rivets. The rivets are going to totally be rubbed off. So I want them to be very shiny on the surface can get the outer edge here, pick that up, make it a little brighter. Um, another thing about the Bones Metallics, which is very interesting, is they can be a little, although they're very, very shiny, they can also be a little translucent, which makes them really easy to blend in. So I'm not really worried about them overwhelming some of my shading here because I can still see it partially through that. So it actually makes them really good for picking up some of these metal highlights because they aren't going to be a hard line. It actually helps you blend. Um, so here I'm just going to accentuate around by putting that metallic around there. Um, got there. You want, whenever you've got a dent or something and you want to accent it, kind of accent the lower edge of it with a little bit of uh, a brighter metallic because that's going to simulate it catching the light. Uh, it's going to make it look even deeper of an indentation. Anything that sticks out. And here's a little scratch that I wanted to do over here. So I'm going to take this bright metallic and I'm going to catch the bottom edge of that to simulate exactly what I just said to you. There we go. Gosh, no, what made that? Some weird monster indented that. Uh, a little bit up here on the top of the chest. 
just stippling it on. Kind of going over some of my lower, lower stuff to make it look a little more realistic. Like I said, this the fact that this is translucent can work for you because I can make certain parts of the armor brighter without losing all the color that I laid down earlier. And there's another dent. I can get the bottom edge of that. Kind of just bring this up and that up. And it also means you can bring in some of the irregularities um, of the armor. So let me take a look at that on my perspective. Wow, it's really mucky and grody. That brown really grodied it up. So I could decide I liked that, or I could I could take down that brown a bit. If I wanted to say, oh, there's too much dirt there, I really don't want that. I can take my original mixture that's more blue and black and kind of build up another layer to knock that down. If I want it really, really dark down here, I can build that another layer, successive layers of this black mixture, this liner mixture up around it. Really sky's the limit on what you want to do and how many layers of the stuff you want to throw at it. Um, pretty much mess with it until it looks awesome is the rule of the game. Uh, and I think that's about where we want to be. Oh yeah, fine scratches. So let me get some pearl white and see if it's going to be hard enough for me. Sometimes you want to add just a little bit, depending on the metallic you're using, right? Some metallics will have a high coverage at a low, um, low amount and some won't. Uh, but if you want a really hard scratch, you might need to add a little bit of white to your metallic. And you just want to go and make a little fine, a couple of fine scratches right here and there. Yeah, this isn't too bad, but I definitely could add a little bit of white to it. So I'm going to show you that. Just a tiny bit. Boom. Pick up a tiny bit of white, mix it with my pearl white. For a little bit more opacity, get a really good point on my brush. And go back and hit that little scratch I want to do again. And that shows up a little bit better. But little fine micro scratches will show up best in the dark part. You want to kind of think where they're coming from. So like if there's a, a creature scratch this guy, you want to make sure that they're all going the same direction. Um, whereas if it's just scratches from normal abrasion, then you're just thinking about, oh, well, it would be, you know, up here on the rivet, it'd be on the edge, you know, here I'd have a harsher one, you know, or maybe it's a whole bunch of different fights that he's been in that the scratches have accumulated through. You know, so think about the character or the model you're working on. My brush has disintegrated. But yeah, so that is pretty much how you do it. And I'm going to actually show you the model that uh, when, when Kirill came in to uh, teach us all, he Reaper sponsored that workshop and Kirill brought us one of his models to work on and I have mine. So I'm going to show you what I did with the first time I used this technique and how it turned out. So there's, there's Grudgy. Actually, we're going to bring him up. That's pretty much what it's going to look like. Um, and like I said, I could, I could put on even more dark stuff. I could, I could add more mud. I could do different colors. I could add some orange into that brown and make it rusty. And there's just so much you can do with this. And it was really fast, right, and messy. It didn't actually take a whole lot of brush control. And this model is uh, great with the amount of detail it has in the metal. It does a lot of the work for you. So if you do want to practice this and you've wanted this bust for a while, it's back in stock. You can grab one up and let's have some fun. Because um, I think it's a great one to do shade metallics on. So here's this model. Now I'm going to show you the one I did for Kirill's class. So there we are. So this one you can see I went really heavy on the browns um, because I wanted a lot more of a, kind of a rusted out look on this. But you see like the, the micro scratches and where we suggested dents uh, and divots in the armor plate and how the, uh, the dark actually gets worse as it gets closer to that, that riveted uh, inverted triangle down there where the dirt and the everything water would have uh, caught and corroded it more. Um, so that's an example, another example of what you can do. All right, that's been our episode of the Painting Toolbox, this time with Ann Forster teaching you some shaded metallic techniques. I hope you guys had fun and I hope you all run out and try them and have great success. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.